Hi folks, Brian here. I want to first of all thank you for downloading the free version of the book. Um, this is a gift to you, it's a gift to the world so that all of us can grow together in our leadership. And I wanted to spend some time uh, in this video to show you how to utilize the book within a PDF reader. Uh, so the free download of the book is a PDF download. So when you pull it up, it's going to pull up your default PDF reader. For many people, it's your web browser, but uh, web browsers generally don't have annotation tools. So it's uh, suggested that you download a PDF uh, reader, a standalone reader that has annotation tools built in. Now there's many great PDF uh, readers and writers out there. Uh, some of them are very advanced, uh, but they normally cost money uh, to download and utilize. Uh, others are free. Um, and the sweet spot on the, on the free versions that have enough annotation tools to really work within the book is using Adobe Acrobat Reader. Not Pro, but Adobe Acrobat Reader. If you get Adobe Acrobat Pro, it's going to be a per month charge. It's kind of pricey. It adds up. It does give you a ton of capabilities that most people simply don't need unless you were into graphics design and or publishing and you're going to be distributing a lot of documents. So the free Adobe Acrobat Reader version of the software is just fine. And uh, I've provided a link to that uh, within the guide that uh, is uh, downloadable along with the book. Now when you do download Adobe Acrobat Reader, it will have a, pro a pop-up or a prompt for you to download the pro version, a free trial for seven days, uh, but then they will start charging you. You really don't need the pro version. And then when you do open up Acrobat Reader, every single time you will have this little prompt about the free seven day trial for pro. Again, you don't need that. Unfortunately, there's not a way to hide it or, or get away from it, uh, but just don't click and you'll be fine. Now, the other thing that uh, Adobe Acrobat does is they will occasionally uh, leave some uh, uh, tools here that when you click them, here's one for instance, if you click convert, it will bring up a login page where you have to download the pro version in order to do some of these functions. So it does take a little bit of tweaking to just figure out what you do want to have seen or not seen, what you do want to click or not click. Uh, but uh, with, with time, it just uh, becomes pretty natural. And you're only going to use a couple of tools in here. So I opened up the book within Adobe Acrobat Reader. Uh, by default, when it first opens, you're going to actually see this view with the bookmarks. Um, you'll see the chapters listed here, and you can advance to each of the chapters uh, directly without having to scroll. Uh, personally, the view I prefer is the pages view, where you can see every single page. And that way, if you want to go to a certain page and look for something specifically, for instance, I'm going to go to the mindful caring, uh, balanced mindful caring model here. I can just read that page, work within that page, and then jump around wherever I want. So it's just up to you however you prefer to use it. And um, what we're going to uh, show you today is just how to use the annotation tools within Adobe Acrobat. And you're going to find those under the comment tab. So you do have all of these various tools here to the right. And again, a number of them are only available in the pro version, which you don't need. So just click comment. And when you click comment, you're going to see a comment bar here that will start filling up as you add comments. And that way you can scan through and go exactly to where you've done something in the book. Uh, I'm actually going to hide that for now so we have a bigger screen view. The other thing that happened when you click the comment button was you have all of these great annotation tools on this annotation toolbar. So let's get to a part of the book that we want to use to annotate. So let's see here. Well, uh, first of all, I'll, I'll share that uh, you do uh, have uh, the highlight tool, which is going to be one of the main tools that you that you want to use. So the highlighter, let's say that you just come across a piece of text that you especially like. Uh, all you have to do is click that highlight tool. You can select your color. Yellow is default. But if you want a different color, you can. And then you see your uh, cursor has turned into a text selection. All you have to do is select the text that you want to highlight, let go and you have a highlight. 
And if we expanded our comment bar here, you'd say you would see that we have a highlight uh, right there on page seven of the book. So if you want to go back to that highlight at some point, all you need to do is expand that and click there and you would uh, go out exactly to that spot. So that's an easy way to just annotate the book, hit the highlights that you want to especially uh, keep track of as you go back and scan through the book uh, to use for reference. But a number of the items in the book that you're asked to do are illustrations. They're self-reflection activities where you're asked to think about something and then illustrate it. So here's uh, the first in the book on page eight, illustrating your strengths, your leadership strengths. This sets the uh, baseline view of, of where you're at right now in your leadership development. And when I use the word illustrate within the book, I always mean using words and drawings words and drawings to create this illustration. And don't worry if you're not a, a good artist. I'm definitely not a good artist, as you'll see here in a moment. Uh, but uh, illustrating opens up the, the mind. It, cre it creates a, a more creative process. Uh, it allows us deeper reflection to do some drawing along with it. And I'll say even if you're a good artist with, let's say, pen, crayon, or uh, paint, uh, it's hard to replicate that. But hopefully you can at least approximate what you would like to share within um, the PDF version using these annotation tools. So let's uh, let's just look at the strengths. So one of my strengths is observation because on the uh, harmonic leadership styles wheel I am an observer. So I'm going to say observation and all I'm going to do is click the uh, text tool, the T tool to add my uh, my text. So I'm going to say observation. Now you'll notice it's kind of small. I want to make that bigger. So I'm going to select it and then I've got some text parameter tools here. I had uh, selected Avenir Next as a font. Uh, depending on your system, it will default to uh, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the other fonts. I think this one defaulted to Arial, perhaps. Um, maybe Calibri. But uh, let's say for the illustration, I really want this text to be big and to be noticeable. So I'm going to make it uh, a 22 point font for uh, Avenir Next. And as you see here on the Harmonic Leadership Styles wheel, there are a number of attributes about uh, obs uh, observers. Uh, besides observation, so I'm going to just add those here. Uh, uh, observers tend to be reasonable, and I consider that one of my leadership strengths. Uh, we tend to be independent. Some people may argue that's not a strength, but uh, as you'll learn in the book, uh, all of our strengths can bring value to the team. Systematics, another one, consistent. And the last one here is watchful. But uh, don't just limit yourself by what you see in the other parts of the book. Really open it up and think about uh, who you are as a person. Come up with that list of uh, attrib attributes uh, that describe who you are. So here we see the words. Now the annotation tool uh, by default will go to a black font. And if you want a different color, uh, all you have to do is select the text that you want to have the different color and then click the text attributes, click, click the uh, color block, and you can select any color here. And once you, uh, once you click the color, click away, you'll see that it changes the color for that particular word. So let's say independent, let's pick a, yeah, let's see, kind of a bold red for independent. I'm just gonna double click to make it a little easier. Systematic, what would be a good, word for system or a good color for systematic how about uh, how about a gray uh, consistent consistent uh, feels like a blue or i'm sorry a green color for me so we're going to select a green here and then and then uh, watchful watchful is kind of feeling like a, a blue color for me so i'm going to click blue on that one. So here you see we have now the beginning of an illustration because we've got a number of different uh, words. We have a number of different colors to tie in some meaning uh, behind uh, the words, but we need some drawings as well. So here's where you get to see I'm really not an artist. So let's say for observation, uh, I'm going to draw a pair of glasses because uh, observers want to want to use uh, glasses to, to make sure they're seeing everything in focus. So I'm going to uh, simply select the uh, circle tool and it's going to uh, default to um, uh, a color. 
and it will draw this ellipse and you can see you can change the size of the ellipse but if you hold down the shift key it will conform it to an exact circle so i'm going to do that and you can use copy and paste tools sorry for the delay it took me a while to get it going and that way you can have two that are alike uh, it doesn't really have good lineup tools but you can approximate here to get it close all right so we've got our two lenses of the glasses now i'm going to select a line tool as you see here at the top and i'm going to draw a line now there's a nuance here as you're drawing if i get too close to one of my previous elements it will end up selecting that previous element instead of allowing me to use my line tool. And you see it even deselected my line tool. So uh, as you're doing your drawings, if you want to layer things on top of each other, you kind of have to be creative. So I'm going to select the line tool again, and I'm going to create my line up here. And I'll uh, note, note here that you can go at any angle, but if you hold the shift key, it will conform to 45 degrees. So that gives you some more control, but I'm going to create a straight line here just big enough to connect those two elements together. And then I will drag and drop. So you saw when I hovered over it, it changed to four arrows, meaning I can drag that wherever I want. Now, if we click away, we will see that we have a pair of glasses. Ta-da! We illustrated. Good job. And uh, that's how you can use the tool to create the self-reflection activities where you're asked to illustrate. Now, if you would prefer, you can do this in an outside program. Since the drawing tools here are not very advanced, uh, you could do this in PowerPoint and just save it, and that way you can reference or another drawing program that you like to use. Uh, there is benefit to having it here because once you open up the tool, um, uh, the, the book within Adobe Acrobat Reader or whatever PDF reader you're using. I do suggest that you click it or click save, uh, save as and click, uh, save it under your name um, by, uh, by just tacking on your name to the front or the back of the book. And that way you have your own unique view. Uh, and that way, if you uh, choose to share it with another person, I always ask you to send them back out to the site so I can keep track of who's using the book. Uh, but uh, this way, it's personalized to you. And by saving it under your name, then each time you come in to do work, and all you need to do is click uh, File and Save, then it will save all of your work. And you see that if we expand this again, our work is building out here. We see that we have 10 comments now. All of these words we've added, the elements that we've added, are starting to build out here. So we see consistent. If I ever wanted to come back and see where I wrote consistent, I could just come back here and, and see that I wrote consistent on page 8 and actually click there to come back to it. All right, so that's how you can use it to create these illustrations within the book, to, to add any text elements, any drawing elements within the book. But let's say we want to use it for completing some of the assessments. So I'm going to advance here in Chapter 1, get up to our first assessment that you're asked to do, and that is the Core Leadership Capabilities Assessment on page 13. And you'll notice that most of the assessments are fairly simple, where you just have a line where you're going to type on. You have a word or words, and then a description of what that word or words mean. So in this case, integrity, displaying honesty and truthfulness in all aspects of the work. Most of the assessments are a simple rating scale. This one is a 1 to 10 rating scale, where 1 is the lowest. So 1 is saying, I don't display integrity much. 10 is the highest. And uh, as I've shared in some of the other videos, I suggest that we steer clear of the extremes because um, none of us are perfect. Um, so even if you feel very strong in an area, um, consider putting a 9 instead of a 10 because we all have room to grow to get even better. Now to fill this in, we're simply going to use the text tool again, uh, as we did last time. So it's highlighted. I'm going to click above integrity. Uh, let's say for integrity, I'm going to say I'm an 8. Oh, but notice it's big, and it's uh, the color that we had last selected. So all you have to do is select the text, go back up to your text attributes. Uh, this can be a 12-point font, and it should be fine. And you see now it looks pretty well on the line. And I'm going to ch uh, choose a, a dark font so it, it matches better. So let's just go down the, the row here. 
Sometimes you have to double, double click to get it active. And I'm, I'll try to center them, but I'm not too good at centering. So let's say for uh, communication, we are, uh, let's say a three. Let's say we really have to, to grow a communication. Business acumen, let's say we're a seven. It's a little low there on that one, but that's fine. As long as you can read it, it is absolutely fine. Inclusivity, uh, let's say we are a uh, two. Let's say we really have to grow in inclusivity. And just for ease here, I'm just going to say fives the rest of the way down. And if I think I did this correctly, then it would add up to a total of 50 for our total score on this assessment. So you see, we, we have room to grow and to develop in our core leadership capabilities. And this is the way that you can simply do these assessments. Of course, you would want to do the math in your head or pull out a calculator to get it exactly right. Uh, I approximated to get to that uh, 50. Um, but it's pretty simple. And again, click Save. It's going to save your work. And that way you can come back to this at any point. Uh, if you're uh, uh, going through a, a class or coming to my monthly check-in uh, coaching sessions, uh, you can pull this up. You can talk about your assessments that you've completed. You can share your your uh, illustrations or the elements uh, within your il illustration and have it for reference. And uh, this is the simple way to use the annotation tools to personalize your book. Uh, because this is not just a book you read, this is a book you work within. This is a book you create, your own unique view. So hopefully that uh, will help you to get started with using the annotation tools. Of course, play around with the others. Uh, you can't hurt anything. Uh, if you do want to come back in and delete anything for the text, all you have to do is select it, hit the delete button on your keyboard, and it goes away. If you want to come back and update it, let's say I'm only a 7. Uh, and for any of the drawing elements, if you did something in a, inadvertent, let's say you accidentally put a uh, square here that you didn't want, uh, then all you have to do is hover over it until it's selected, hit the delete key on your keyboard, and it's gone. Uh, sometimes if you have things that are layered, you can, this is the polygon tool, this one's pretty cool, you can really create some unique designs and then tie it in together. You can also right click and choose delete for that. Okay, so a number of ways you can manage uh, within, within the program itself. Uh, oh, and you can, I'm doing another polygon here, uh, you can move. So once you uh, move away from the element, move back over it, you see that you have the four arrows. So you can move anything that you want in order to uh, create your unique view. I'm going to choose the arrow here. Let's say we really want to highlight that we got a 50 there so that when we're scanning through the book, we can come back to this page and go, oh, let's see, where was that again? Oh yeah, there's my arrow. I really need to work on that aspect. I want to grow in this area. All right, so hopefully that gives you a, a starting point on how to use the tools. Again, you can't hurt anything, so just play around with the tools, get used to them, and before you know it, you will be an expert. And I just hope that this provides you what you need in order to gain benefit from the book. I wanted to keep this as simple as possible in terms of distribution, in terms of working within the book, and give people the freedom of flexibility to use your program of choice to do the annotations, to work within the book. Uh, and again, Adobe Acrobat Reader is free. Um, just don't click anything where it says free trial or pro version. And you're going to have all of the tools needed to make this book your own. Be well.